A tragedy just happened. Bethesda once again is announcing more stuff. And I am at the point where I just want Bethesda to stop announcing things. Just quietly go into the sunset and then fall in the pits of hell where they deserve to be. Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. I hope all of you are doing absolutely wonderful because it's Friday, you've made it to the end of the week, and let's round things out with a little bit of Bethesda news, shall we? Because they've been making a lot of announcements, a lot of noise over at Bethesda, starting with QuakeCon. Oh, that does not sound good at all. Carrying into the rest of this week, and I think they're going to make some more noise next week, as we'll discuss in this all-encompassing announcement-focused video. So if you're new here and you're into what's going on with Bethesda, please consider subscribing. Love to have you on board. Grab your holy water and earplugs because it's going to be painful. And with that, let's begin at the top. Bethesda Game Studios. They made a very interesting announcement with Elder Scrolls Castles. <laughs> this and starting off with a mobile game. Amazing. 10 out of 10. And now there's someone who looks like they want to speak with two managers in front of us. Yay. I'm so excited. This one's coming out September 10th. The rollout for this has been kind of... Production director, by the way. Oh, that installs so much confidence in me. It's strange because they released it in particular regions of the world, and it was only on the Google Play Store for a certain stretch of time, and now it's arriving everywhere September 10th. And alongside that was a little video from the developers at Bethesda Games. Oh, look at that. It was a lot box. That's so cool. Everyone's going to love that. Studios showcasing the game, breaking down all of its features, and... I'm going to be honest, y'all, like, I love Fallout Shelter, not just because of the memories attached to the idea of, you know, seeing Fallout 4 and then Shelter drops, and as someone who does not like mobile games, realizing, like, oh my god, this is such a great mobile game and putting an ungodly amount of time into it, like, I have a lot of love for Fallout Shelter, and Elder Scrolls Castles, I think the best thing I can say about it right now, looking from afar, is it's Elder Scrolls Fallout Shelter, but looking at this thing man i know there's a lot of like i call it es6 brain rot like anything elder scrolls related that gets announced now is doomed to be just submitted by elder scroll 6 comments but it's not even that for me i'm cool with elder scroll spin-offs and different approaches to elder scrolls i just th i am definitely not cool with a mobile game from bethesda the big games the triple a games the ones on pc and consoles don't can't those can't even reach the standard the standards that we want and now a mobile game. Oh boy. I think we can do better than this. When I look at Elder Scrolls Castles, I, I even look at the art style and go, what? <laughs> like what? This just doesn't look right. It, at least one thing you could say about Elder Scrolls Blades is that really I thought captured the Elder Scrolls look and feel a little bit. Was it like Skyrim or Oblivion or Morrowind, the games that I truly own from the franchise? No, but could it emulate it at least decently in art style? No, we don't care. It doesn't matter if it emulates it in art style or not. This is a cheap, no one asked for game designed to milk the money of the people who are dumb. Yeah, respectably so for a mobile game. Like, I don't really love Elder Scrolls Blades, but I don't hate it. But when I look at something like Elder Scrolls Castles, I just don't like this art style, man. But also, the other thing I had a problem with was watching all the developers highlight, I put this in quotes, features for the game. But as someone who played a lot of Fallout Shelter, a lot of this is just Fallout Shelter with a different skin. Like, I'm not trying to... Of course it is. What, what did you expect, honestly, at this point? An actual game from Bethesda? Bruh, not happening. It trivialized their efforts. There's little different things like whoever's the emperor can change at any point in time. But I feel like there are also games like this that have been done before and much better and don't have microtransactions attached to them. One thing that I have to say about Fallout Shelter, as much as I really liked it, is that later on in the game's update cycle, the microtransactions, you know, they started to introduce new types for like questing beyond the vault and getting more energy. Of course they did. Because this is how all the good mobile games, and when I say good mobile games, don't actually mean that they're good. This is how all of them function. You introduce a game that's actually playable, you can sink a couple of minutes in, in a day, you get addicted. And at that point where they're like, okay, okay, we got, we, we got them all, like Pokemon or, you know, monkeys in a petting zoo. And then they ramp up the microtransactions, and you're like, nothing's fair anymore. But the sunk cost fallacy principle doesn't allow me to quit this game because I'm a dumb consumer. Don't be like that. Energy and, and all that sort of stuff where I thought the initial launch of the game was very balanced. 
Uh, and I thought they kind of got away from that. And so I have a little less trust, especially after how Elder Scrolls Blades was economized, which was not great at all. So Elder Scrolls Castles, like any Bethesda Game Studios game, I'll fire it up and just see what's going on there just to make sure I'm on top of things. But like as a fan of the franchise, I don't find this exciting. As someone who likes previous games from, I believe this is the Bethesda Game Studios Montreal team, I don't find this exciting. And I think that... A lot, Great Canadians. A lot of the features just look too... So you can imagine what's going to happen here. ...familiar where if they had more of an Elder Scrolls-y spin on it, beyond like different, you know, like Argonians or the Red Guard inhabiting this instead of Vault, a castle, then I'd be more excited. So maybe for like the Elder Scrolls diehards, this is really exciting for them. But for me, as someone who I think loves Elder Scrolls a ton, I really, I, this isn't lighting my fire. So that's coming out September 10th if you are interested in it. Now, even Sad. earlier this week, we got an announcement from QuakeCon, multiple announcements at that, and they were all Doom related. No real information on Doom the Dark Ages, at least as of this moment in time, but we did get the... Okay, listen, at least the Doom cannot be messed up, right? 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 Announcement of Doom 1 and 2, which I am so pumped about, and it's available right now. And also, if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you can just go ahead and download it right this moment. And the feature set for this thing is insane. So you already had Doom 1 and 2, which got re-released a while ago, enhanced. But now alongside all the content that was in those enhanced editions, you have a brand new episode that was made by id Software, Night Dive Studios, and Machine Games. It's called Legacy of the Rust. And it is the first official episode since Doom 2 to feature new demons and weapons. And it's broken into two episodes with 16 maps in total. There's also online cross-platform deathmatch and 16 player co-op like it's absolutely insane there's community published mod support available now so now you can even publish your own mods on pc and download them in game like it's awesome they've even improved the performance so it's up to 60 frames now at 1080p on all platforms and 120 at 4k res on xbox series consoles pc and ps5 but like i said Ooh. on top of that there are things that were in that enhanced edition the master levels for doom 2 TNT Evolution, the Plutonia Experiment, No Rest for the Living, Sigil. There's so much content here. It is insane. My f okay, I guess that's good. I, I mean, Doom is always nice. First introduction to Doom was actually on the Xbox Live Arcade when it was a downloadable title there. And I absolutely love the original Doom. I actually have the classic collection on my PS4 when I bought it from Limited Run Games. And no doubt this is going to get another physical re-release. But I'm very excited about this. I thought this was a great little shadow drop. So if you want to check that out, that's available now. Also available now. This one was surprising to me because I thought, if anything, this would arrive a little bit sooner. But Doom Eternal, yes, Doom Eternal from 2020 is getting official mod support now. And as broken down by Marty Stratton, it is the same tool set that was used to build Doom Eternal in the first place. So right now, there's already some test maps out there of people who are way better at Doom Eternal than me, by the way. This gameplay is not mine. <laughs> and uh, holy smoke, some people are just cooking up. Yeah, this is, this is pretty impressive. A lot of fast switches, animation cancels and whatnot. That was, that was pretty good. Wow, okay. On this game. But Doom Eternal getting official mod support. I'm always cheering for this sort of stuff. I think it's great to see. You know, for example, The Witcher 3 just got official mod support. And I love that it's no longer, not that it always was, but I love that it's no longer in the spotlight just Bethesda Game Studios and their modding community that's kind of being taken away from them effectively. Like there are so many other modding communities out there because I think one thing that Bethesda Game Studios, for example, did really well was you nurture your modding scene and then you get to hire the people who know how to make your type of game and you sort of skip a whole onboarding process because everyone's already familiar with your tool set or at least roughly familiar with your tool set. And so now other companies are going to be able to benefit from that. Like hardcore Doom fans are going to be able to not just make their own classic Doom episodes like in 1 and 2, but they can make Doom Eternal mods and then evolve that into a career. Same thing with CD Projekt Red, making Witcher 3 cyberpunk mods and evolving that into a career, especially because CD Projekt... I mean, good luck with that. I guess it can happen, but again, modding is pretty niche. Most people don't mod. I know we're talking about Bethesda and everyone knows about modding in Bethesda and whatnot, but the fact that everyone knows about it doesn't mean that modding is like a super big thing that happens. Again, best case scenario, 3% of the player base uh, have ever modded. More than once. Well, more than zero, I guess. Project Red is expanding globally right now. They're like in Boston. So it's 
Really? Unless the modding is ex uh, in the client and is made super easy, people are not going to do that. Because mods can break, it's annoying and whatnot. This is why people buy the paid mods, pay the paid shitty mods for the games, like Starfield and whatnot, because it's just one button and it's maybe going to work, because again, we're talking about Bethesda. They're really bad at everything. Really, really exciting to see more companies embracing the modding community. And so I'm very excited to see what modders come up with in Doom Eternal. I feel like it's a natural fit because I think of 2016's Snap Map, which I thought was just always so overlooked, had had so much potential. If you go to some of the top rated ones right now, you'll see like there's a Pillar of Autumn, Halo Combat Evolved mission recreation there. And you can feel like it's almost there. It's working with what it's got. And there are moments if you're like me, you've played that game like a dozen times, you'll be like, ah, Right, I remember that. Uh, it's done in a little cheeky way, but now the idea that someone could like recreate Halo fully in Doom Eternal is awesome. So I'm very excited to see what projects are taking on. The only thing I worry, I guess, a bit about is the support is here. Meanwhile, we're moving on to Doom the Dark Ages, presumably in 2025, if that release window holds from id. Chances are it's going to be made on the same engine and everything that they do for modding is going to be easily upgradable for the next version of the game. So it's probably not even a huge loss or whatever. So I'm wondering how many people are going to be driven to just start making mods all these years later. I could be totally wrong, but I'm interested to see how that all goes and what comes from this community. Now, sticking with Doom, there were a new set of creations revealed during this QuakeCon showing. Some of them were for Skyrim and some of them were for Starfield. What was I thought the most- Starfield, now we're cooking with fire, boys. Most exciting of the bunch based on what I just played recently. We have a video up on the channel now about it with the Bard's College expansion is what- Oh God, the Bard's College expansion. There is no way that wasn't a paid advertisement. Admittedly, I didn't look. Maybe it did have the paid advertisement box tick. Because, man, that is just not worth $10. The Bond College is just... Okay, it's it's cute, maybe for 3 but 10 <laughs> Absolutely not. It is... No, 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 no. It's just... It's just not that. What's next from King Ath Creations, where they're making a free mini quest that is based around the Doom license. You could hear, again, voice acting in it. The art looks sick here. It looks like you're gonna get the Doom armor. You're gonna get the sword. Mm, making a mini quest, so they are trudging the waters to see if it, uh, there's potential there, okay. And everything, I am so pumped for this, because look, again, I I'll just point you to that video. It is up on the channel right now. That creation from King Ath Creations, the Bard's College expansion is so good like the way they just so good so good he says incorporated everything into the base game in such a natural way like i am so excited that they are working on starfield content as well uh, this is a company that after bard's college expansion like anything they make i will buy this is a free mini quest so you don't have to buy it which is again really awesome to see that they're just doing this so i'm very pumped about this excited to see what comes of it we have one more announcement to get into before we transition over to starfield which oh no it's this fallout 76 caravan mechanic the one mechanic that no one ever wants in your uh, your games, aka Escort NPC Quest. Leads us into potential announcements happening oh, no. as soon as next week from Bethesda. What we're looking at here is Fallout 76's newest update following up Skyline Valley, which is called Milepost Zero. This is dropping on September 3rd. It's been available in the PTS. What the, this thing is so bad that they needed to implement lore. Why? By caravans are necessary in the world of Atomic Apocalypse. How dumb do you need to be? You have effectively is a new caravan system in the game. The caravans will spawn on the map as dynamic events that are going to move through certain parts of the map. You'll have to protect them from enemies attacking said caravan. You're going to get supplies afterwards, which you can take back to milepost zero, and you can upgrade particular caravans and invest in types. Yeah, we already we already saw more detailed uh, showcasing of this. AK. It's typical Bethesda slop that doesn't make sense. All caravans are uh, noticeable by every person on the server, aka you can join at any time. But if you join, you get, you know, one-tenth of the reward, which is effectively nothing for your troubles. And 
Well, c have fun being attacked by small ants because reasons. It it's going to be great. It's going to be so cool and enjoyable. Trust me, bro. You're not going to regret this, okay? <laughs> and then the upgrade system for the caravans doesn't make sense because upgrading the caravans to give you more reward for doing the mechanic is useless because by the time you actually get the late game rewards you have already unlocked the shops with the special currency that you get for doing these events aka unlocking the last thing doesn't matter because you already have a, 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 a unlocked the goal of the caravan thing which is vendors it, it's a completely nonsense system of caravans so you'll have like i mean it looks like honestly chat gpt made it like the ammo merchant or like a decorator imported goods etc etc so there's a little bit of a progression here there's a brand new currency if you will here as well in the supplies so it's nothing crazy on the level of skyline valley where you can expect me making like a review of the update but it's really cool to see them following up what i thought was their best update since wastelanders in something pretty quick and pretty cool and actually has some substance there so that is again due out september 3rd but Let's talk a bit about what's going on with Starfield because that leads... Oh boy, Starfield, that's the big one. ...into those potential announcements I was talking about. It's been leaked online, like, everywhere. It's been reposted everywhere. So many YouTube channels have re-uploaded. Starfield vehicle gameplay leaks are out in the wild right now. Wow, this looks so cool, said no one. Now, and it looks awesome. Like, so good. It's in first person complete mako vibes from mass effect one i love how things that i probably should have considered but didn't expect are here like gravity impacting the bro this is gonna be so fun vehicle uh you know the because this is this is gonna be a failure you know why because all of the, uh, all of the maps have rocks in specific spaces aka you're constantly gonna get stuck on rocks and when you drive over a hill you're gonna jump and you're gonna be face first in the rock this is not gonna be a win. Wade's bouncing around. You can hear your companion. Also, again, what's the point of this? Just getting faster through your next load screen? Kind of pathetic. Reacting to things you're doing in the vehicle. Uh, I hope you can go into third person. I imagine you'd be able to, but I just hope you can. I just think this looks so good. The only thing I guess I worry about with seeing this gameplay is what was one of my initial concerns in that I'm probably gonna crash into like every single rock here. Yeah, because the whole map is just rocks, buddy. Uh, so I hope planets are, you know, barren enough where I can just go from point A to point B without crashing a million times. You know, skill. Dude, imagine the, they make actually the planets, the planets barren enough. That would be such a failure because that would mean that there's literally nothing on them. Previously, you had rocks, but imagine now that you have nothing on them. That's going to be a 10 out of 10 banger. Issue, I guess, but uh, otherwise, this looks awesome. And I'm curious to see how this is incorporated into something like Shattered Space, because my prediction is, as we get into announcements of the future, as I've said before, so we won't sit down for too long, is Starfield's new update featuring this vehicle gameplay is probably going to be shadow dropped during opening night live or sometime during Gamescom with the announcement of Shattered Space coming probably within a week, because I feel like Shattered mm. Space should... Oh, that's going to be the big one, boys. ...likely land on the one-year anniversary for Starfield. Like, it'd be really cool to see Makes Starfield sense. and its Shattered Space expansion dropping September 1st. And hey, right now, you can get this vehicle update. And since the vehicle update will be in the game, by that point in time, I hope that they're actually going to make it useful in this new set of quest content, because right now, the only worry I would have about the vehicle is I'm kind of going from point A to point B to things that don't interest me much, which is a lot of procedural content. Everything, AK. So that is the only- When your game is 99% procedural content and you're saying, well, co procedural content kind of doesn't interest me. That's not good. Matty, Matty, you, you, you can't say that, but this is going to be mad. Todd Howard is going to, well, probably have to get a chair and then, then get on that chair and spank you or something. I would say lingering concern but otherwise i think the vehicle gameplay looks absolutely outstanding otherwise outstanding. announcements coming down the line here gotta do indiana jones soon time is ticking the oh god indiana jones is gonna be just s such a bad flash in the pan it's gonna be insane the original rumor was that it was going to arrive with an announcement at d23 
you know, the whole Disney Expo, because there were rumors that it was going to be gaming focused. And we did get some of that with like a big Fortnite collaboration. Unfortunately, no Kingdom Hearts 4 news, but no announcements for indie there. So with Gamescom coming up and right now, as far, dun, 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 dun. as far as we know, based on what Xbox posted with their little roadmap, Indiana Jones sticking. Oh, look at that. It's the heroic female character that's going to completely demasculate you and save you from all the situations that you come into because you're a stupid man. Ah, and take over as the new character. I can't wait for this burning hell sensation of a future to come. The 2024, all right, I think it's time to announce a release date. When's that going to be? Right now, the rumor, according to The Verge, is December. I do wonder with the avowed delay if November might be a, a time to kind of make the cut. I wonder if with the avowed delay, if they might shoot for November, especially because if they want to make the cut for... The Game Awards, I believe there's a certain point in November where the line is drawn, so maybe they shoot for the stars there if they can pull it off. But either way, really excited to learn more about that game. And so there's a lot more announcements in the tuck from Bethesda. Sure did, Art. Sure did, Art. Anyway, that was Mr. Matty Plays. Oh boy, Bethesda. What a time to be a time. Bye-bye.